Dr. Arvind Virmani, former Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India, joins us right now. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Virmani. <clears throat> the IIP numbers and the CPI numbers have come in today. Uh, are you a little disappointed? Uh, not really. You know, if you look at the IIP, uh, the last uh, last month's numbers were really pushed up a little bit by the uh, base effect. So uh, that base effect is no longer there in the June numbers. So actually, it is it's a pickup. If you adjust for the base of effect, the growth uh, has actually uh, picked up since uh, uh, June. So it's in the right direction. So I'm not disappointed uh, uh, really by the IIP number per se, mm. uh, but we have to remember that uh, IIP uh, has been stuck at the bottom of a kind of extended U for a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't really expect at this stage uh, for uh, that to recover very, very sharply. I still feel that it's going to be a a gradual recovery at this point. So you think, uh, I mean, uh, Dr. The, Virmani, uh, much of the uh, capital markets uh, are actually expecting, were expecting this U to have started on the uptrend, but you expect that, you're saying that the bottom is now going to be stretched further. No, the bottom is out. We are out of the bottom. Okay, all right. Uh, but uh, mm. what I'm saying is, it's a, it's, uh, we are out of the bottom. It is rising. So that's why I said I was not disappointed. Mm. Uh, the number, if you uh, go back and look at the base, mm. is actually adequate. Right. But what I'm saying is uh, one should not project that uh, as if it's going to go uh, up as rapidly because mm. uh, the IIP we know from you know, decades, it, it's very, it fluctuates a lot. Uh, and, and therefore, at this point, I, I would say that there'll be a good, uh, solid but gradual recovery. Mm. Uh, looking forward, let's say, the next uh, uh, six to nine months. All right. One should also keep in mind that this is uh, so, not... Uh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, sir. So the, the next part of it, your uh, point about CPI, again, uh, you know, when one took stock of it uh, three or four months ago, uh, uh, you know, th th there was, uh, again, a lot of fluctuation a year ago. So again, you have to be careful about the base effects. Mm. Uh, and so this little blip, I, I don't think is a problem. I am uh, myself fairly convinced that we are on a, a firm downtrend as far as the CPI inflation is concerned. Mm. Uh, but there is a little bit of a, a, a doubt here because in some sense, you know, about two years ago, we had a similar uh, down, downtrend in the uh, uh, inflation and then it got bumped up again. So, uh, even though I, I would bet uh, on uh, inflation uh, continuing its downtrend, but one must put a little bit of probability, I don't know, maybe 25% uh, that there could be uh, some other new, uh, you know, uh, negative uh, developments which could again uh, stop this trend. So, Dr. Virmani, in a sense that you are reflecting what the kind of inflation expectation numbers that the RBI just put out about a week ago. And there, the immediate term, three-month inflation expectation, median inflation expectation has actually gone up rather than go down. I know that the one-year forward has gone down marginally, yeah. but the immediate term seems to have gone up. Well, I, I have, uh, uh, unfortunately, I really uh, am quite skeptical about this uh, these expectation numbers because there's a huge gap uh, between the actual inflation and these expectations. And really, my question has been that what is, you know, we've started these inflation-adjusted bonds. What do they say? Because I would be willing to bet, I mean, just uh, to put it in that way, bet against these expectations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's like putting your money where your mouth is. Mm -hmm. the, the expectations are showing 12 to 14 percent inflation, which I, I just don't understand... Uh, what is the basis of that? So, uh, uh, you know, so uh, the question is, are these people who are not betting their money on this 12% or, or are, are they putting their money on that 12-14%? Mm. And if they are putting their money, I would be happy to bet against them. Uh, but the only way to do it is through these uh, inflation index bonds, which I, I don't think uh, are showing uh, uh, that kind of uh, expectations. Mm. 
All right, we were working out some, de uh, some calculations, numbers on what the reduction in oil prices, the overall correction, global correction in uh, crude prices is going to, how it's going to affect our import bill as well as how it's going to affect the fiscal deficit. I'm going to hand over to Prashant, my colleague, who worked out those numbers. So Prashant, take it away. Just give those numbers to Dr. Virmani and then we want his uh, opinion on that. Uh, so, Dr. Birmani, you know, so uh, the oil prices uh, has uh, have come down about by about ten odd dollars or so from the day that the budget was presented. Uh, and uh, you know, if you look at the savings on uh, you know one dollar fall in oil prices, that works out to uh, about a billion odd dollars or so. So prices are down ten dollars. Exchange rate of sixty. That's about sixty thousand crores straight. Now, of course, you know, these calculations are simplistic. One can argue there are various moving parts. Oil, of course, need not stay here till uh, the end of the financial year. Exchange rate can go haywire. All those things can happen. But we're just looking at this as things stand at this stage. Uh, 60 or 1,000 crore, cut an import bill. As a percentage of uh, the fiscal deficit, that's about 11, 11 and a half or percent or so. Uh, that's the fall in fiscal deficit that we're talking about, uh, if this were to happen. A more straightforward uh, thing to look at would be the trade deficit. Uh, and, you know, there are lesser moving parts there. Uh, but if you, if, how would you look at these numbers? Would this, would this create, uh, if, if prices were to stay where they are, would this create significant room uh, for, uh, for Mr. Jaitley? And, I mean, you know, if you consider the, uh, the, this fall in the fiscal deficit, the new fiscal deficit uh, won't be 4.1. It'll be actually about 3.6-odd percent or so as a percentage of GDP. Uh, so that's huge. I mean, if it actually plays out, what's your sense? So uh, 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 let's start with uh, an assumption that uh, these oil prices will remain and perhaps uh, reduce further. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, as I completely agree with what you've just laid out, that has big impacts because it can uh, act as a driver to stimulate consumption. I mean, the simple way I put it for, for the common person is, uh, particularly for oil, it's a pure transfer of income from India to the oil exporters. And if this is injected back into the economy, uh, it can really stimulate uh, consumption uh, and investment and growth. But, of course, uh, directly uh, the way it works through the channels is the way you have said, uh, through the uh, current account deficit and the fiscal deficit, and that is how we'll start seeing the impact. So uh, clearly, any uh, long-term, uh, long-term meaning, you know, uh, reduction in uh, oil prices over the next three to six months uh, will have uh, a, a great impact uh, on stimulating and reviving the economy more quickly than perhaps uh, I outlined in the beginning uh, when I started. But uh, we, we have to keep in mind that why uh, did these uncertainties arise? And so clearly, as again, I think you probably discussed on your program, there are two factors. One is this global uncertainty uh, in the Middle East, uh, you know, and the political turmoil, uh, which is quite substantial, you know, stretching from Libya uh, to Iraq. Uh, and the second, the U.S. Uh, increase in oil, uh, oil production. So uh, what this decline suggests to me is that uh, people are fairly confident uh, that the uh, political turmoil uh, is, is, is not going to have an effect which it might have uh, five or ten years ago because uh, the U.S. oil production is rising so quickly. So that's good, you know, because it's really the oil experts who can make that judgment. And if it, that is being reflected in these oil prices, that's very good news for India. Got that. I mean, let's, let's keep our fingers crossed. And I think the government would be closely watching this as well, uh, what's really happening. The RBI, of course, very uh, keen eye on the exchange rate, the government, of course, on oil prices and what happens there. Uh, I'd just like to point out that the IEA has lowered their forecast for demand, oil demand, for the rest of the year, projecting, uh, you know, slow, essentially co uh, highlighting slower growth and hence lower demand for oil worldwide. Uh, so that should go down well with... Uh, this uh, thesis that oil prices remain soft. I mean, it's quite, uh, you know, with all this conflict uh, around the world, you'd usually imagine that 
oil, we'll see oil price spikes, but that hasn't happened. We saw a spike actually from 105 to 115, but we are back, basically back down so, to about 103, 104 dollars or so. Dr. Virmani, uh, yes, you want to, you, you wanted to come in, right? But please. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's a negative aspect of that, which is uh, something which I have been saying uh, at the IMF uh, since 2011, which is that we are going to see a lost decade in the EU, uh, in the euro area, the EU, uh, which, you know, my colleagues in the IMF were not uh, taking very seriously, but I, I said this many times at the IMF. So that is coming to pass. Now everybody recognizes that's what happening in, in the euro area. And the second point I had made at the fund uh, in 2011 in discussing the U.S. economy is that the recovery in the U.S. is not going to be sharp uh, and quick. It's going to be a slow recovery uh, for various factors which we need not go into right now. So, so what uh, it shows is that the IMF has also adjusted its world forecast down. Uh, everybody else is now accepting what one had uh, talked about in 2011, and therefore the demand is 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 less. Uh, so that is a little bit of a negative factor as far as uh, global environment is concerned. So, uh, in fact, for us, Dr. Virmani, we would be that, interested in uh, should, uh, getting uh, your views on U.S. growth because that's very crucial for the capital markets. You are saying that the U.S. recovery is going to be slower, which would be, in a sense, good for the capital markets because. Uh, that would assume that the tapering program will continue slightly longer. Well, uh, I was putting it from the perspective of 2011 mm -hmm. when I had predicted that it would be slower than most people okay. expected. Right. Now, the question is, at this point, is it going to be even slower? No, I, I, you know, it has been slow. Mm -hmm. And that slow uh, recovery is going to continue. It's not going to jump uh, very sharply. But it has recovered. And it is recovering, which is a good thing. So what is your... From uh, our perspective also, in terms of our demand for software. Mm. So what do you expect in terms of interest rates? <laughs> uh, you mean the global interest rates? Yes, global, uh, well, especially Well, it's quite US. clear uh, that the, the, the... Yeah, the U.S. Uh, recovery means that interest rates will rise. Uh, the, the kind of uh, dispute or contention as far as the taper is concerned is uh, there are many people. In fact, Raghu has been uh, one of those for a long time, again, from 2010-11 when these discussions started, who, who always opposed uh, uh, the expansion, uh, monetary expansion in the U.S. Uh, because uh, he was in the camp which believed that you can't uh, go back as smoothly as some of us, I uh, have been in the camp where I thought if you can raise it uh, gradually, you can also lower it uh, gradually. So, uh, so that is where uh, the two camps are. Those like me who believe that the Fed can manage the taper to make it a smooth uh, adjustment rather than those who think there will be a huge uh, uh, jump and, uh, and a, uh, a discontinuous adjustment which will... Uh, disrupt all the markets. But, you know, uh, you, you have to uh, make your own judgments. I mean, I can't, you know, that is not something I would uh, uh, kind of bet my uh, savings on, you know. Virmani, it's always a pleasure having you with us here, sir. Thanks very much for your time. And I uh, hope we can have you on when, uh, you know, on, 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 the, on the coming Monday. Friday is, of course, uh, a market holiday, Independence Day, but uh, the Prime Minister's speech would be keenly watched, uh, not just for uh, you know what he outlines as far as the social agenda goes, uh, but also a lot of talk as to what will what will be there for uh, from the financial market perspective. Inclusion, of course, is something that Dr. Rajan also, in a way, alluded to, uh, would find space in Mr. Modi's speech on Friday. Thanks very much, Dr. Virmani. Appreciate it.